Hey everybody, my name is Pastor Chris and I'm the executive pastor here at West Salem Fourscore Church and we are starting a series of midweek pause uh, devotionals. We want to bring you into our devotional life, what we're thinking about uh, as we go through the pause reading plan. And today I want to, I want to look at uh, Acts chapter 14. We would have read that on Monday, uh, Acts chapter 14. Uh, but before we, we talk about the story, I just want you to think with me for a second. I want you to think about the time that you uh, received the greatest praise from people over something that you did. What did that do for your, your heart? What did that do for your soul? Now imagine also one of the greatest days of criticism you ever felt. What did that do to your, your psyche? What did that do to your mind? Now imagine that, that those instances happened on the same day with the same group of people. What would that have done to you? Acts chapter 14, we have a story about Paul uh, in a place called Lystra. And Paul is in, um, is in a group of people, and there's a man who had never walked before. Paul goes over to this man, and he uh, prays for him. The, the man gets healed, begins walking. They begin to uh, praise Paul. In fact, they begin to say, this must be Zeus. This must be Zeus. He's a god. And they begin to worship him. And Paul begins to deflect the worship. Uh, and as he's deflecting the worship, he's saying, no, this is about Jesus. And a group, of, uh, a group of what they would call Judaizers came and they began to talk to the crowd. They began to convince the crowd that Paul's not a god. He's a heretic. And the same group of people, they began to uh, not praise him anymore. They began to pick up stones and they begin to run him out of the town and stone him and leave him for dead. Imagine same group of people go from calling you a god to wanting you dead. And uh, then it says in verse 21, this, this almost, it sounds like just geography, but I, I want to give some context to it. In verse 30 or 21, it says, they preached the gospel, Paul and Silas, in that city, which is Derby and won a large amount of disciples. And then it says this, it says, then they returned to Lystra. Same group of people that left him for dead. Now the question I wanna ask us today is this, what causes a man to continue to serve the people who, to, to put it lightly, harshly criticized him? If I were to rephrase this for us and how I kind of processed it in my own devotionals is, how can we learn from Paul so we can continue serving those who don't receive us or our message. I wanna give you two quick thoughts about this based on the life of Paul and the writings of Paul. Number one is that Paul knew his calling was not based on opinion or success, but by God's direction. In fact, look at uh, what Paul writes in, uh, to the group of uh, churches in Corinth. He says, but we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that all surpassing power is from God, not from us. We are hard pressed on every side, but we're not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, persecuted, but not abandoned. Now he was abandoned by the people of Lystra, but Paul knew that God never abandoned him in that, in that way. And he says in verse 10, we always carry around in our bodies the death of Christ so that the life of Christ may be revealed in our bodies. The death of Christ. It's not only his physical death on the cross, but it's the rejection that Christ uh, went through in that moment on the cross. And we carry that within our own bodies, knowing that our rejection, uh, the message that we carry, the gospel of Jesus Christ, it may be rejected, but when we are rejected or face those feelings of rejection that Christ felt on the cross, that he is with us to reveal his life in and through us. So Paul knew that his calling was not based on opinions or success. It was just being obedient to the direction of God. And you may feel like the message of Christ in your house, in your marriage, in your family is being rejected, that your witness is being rejected, but know that God is present with you. And he's not looking at your success, he's looking at your obedience. One more thought is that Paul, in the middle of this instance in Lystra, knew that his identity was anchored in God's opinion, not man's. Paul deflected the praise and let uh, the criticism that he didn't let that criticism keep him from serving the people. 
he knew deep down that if God could be for me, who could stand against me? He knew, as he wrote in the first chapter of Ephesians, that he was adopted, that he was chosen, that he was forgiven, that he was called holy, that he was blameless in the eyes of God, no matter what, what other people thought of him. So he didn't look to the success of the message being received. He looked at God's call on his life and what he was called to do. He didn't look to man's opinion about him. He looked to God's opinion for him. And my challenge for us today is that you and I have a unique group of people that we are called to serve. We won't always find favor with them. We won't always find success with them. What we're called to do is to be obedient to serve even when we're rejected. And we're called to serve even if we are uh, criticized, whether it's in our marriage, our family, with our employers or our employees. In the, in the friendships that we uh, have within the city that we live in. We are called to serve people no matter what. We're called to return to them, just as Paul returned to Lystra to begin to serve these people. And it's not always easy. You may feel abandoned by people, but you're not abandoned by God. You may feel pressed on every side, but God is in the pressing with you. And I, I, wanna, I wanna pray for us today before we uh, end our time here. I wanna pray that we would have strength to continue to serve. Would you pray with me? Father, we are so thankful that you will never leave us. You call us to serve people even if we're not successful. You call us to serve people even when they reject us. And God, we lean this morning on your favor on our lives and the way that you see us. Let us today be reminded of how you see us and what you've called us to. And please, God, give us strength and grace to do the hard work of serving people with your message of the gospel. We love you. We thank you for your strength today. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, thank you for being with us, and we hope you have a blessed day.